Now let's talk about the elapids, the uh, other venomous snake that we have an antidote for. And so these are typically the coral snakes found in North America, but it also includes your cobras and things like that. Now, I've depicted here two coral snakes right there. And there's a uh, popular mnemonic that goes red on yellow, kill a fellow, red on black, venom lack. So that's meant really to distinguish between which one's got the venom. So you can see here the red is on the yellow and those without where the red is on the black, those ones don't have venom. Now, Leon Gussow of the toxicology website, The Poison Letter, sorry, I mean, thepoisonreview.com, uh, gave me another mnemonic. Red on black, run like hell. Red on yellow, run like hell. Because why are you standing around looking to dis at this snake? It's a snake, and it's going to bite you. Just get the heck out of there. Now, you'll remember that we talked about that these snakes have these tiny little fangs in the back of their mouth. And the fact that they're tiny means that they really can't hold that much venom. So in order to really poison their prey, they have to bite and hang on as they inject their poison. Now, some of these snakes, not the coral snakes, but some of them, like some cobras, can actually spit the poison as well. But the coral snakes don't do that. So what this venom does is it blocks the acetylcholine receptors on muscles. So acetylcholine can't activate the rest of the muscles. So this is a non-depolarizing uh, muscle blockade, a neurotoxin of sorts. And this also has an effect on cardiac muscle. So you'll end up with decreased activity in the decreased cardiac activity, decreased muscle activity in You'll start with numbness and paresthesias, ptosis, all of which can rapidly progress to respiratory failure and even death. And these symptoms can also take a long time to develop, sometimes even uh, 12 hours. And they can last for a long time, going for even weeks to months sometimes. And oddly, you can have no local findings at the sign of the bite initially. And so if you think about it, it's pretty scary. So in this spot here, you have no findings, and then they can gradually progress to respiratory failure. And what's even weirder is that one of the initial presenting symptoms is euphoria. So not only do you have no symptoms, they might actually be feeling pretty good here. And they're about to take a turn for the worse. Because there's a 10 to 20% mortality with these bites. So that's kind of scary. So what do we do about it? Well, we have a North American coral snake derived from horses anti-venom. And so you want to give this uh, antidote sometime before symptoms develop. And even if you do, they still might develop these neurologic sequelae. So in this period, it would be supportive care, which may include intubation and mechanical ventilation while we wait for that uh, poison to go away. So what if someone gets bit by a cobra now, you might be asking yourself, why would that even happen? Where are they going to run into a cobra in the United States? Well, it's usually going to be in one of two places. It's either going to be in a zoo, in which case you're dealing with trained snake handlers who, who know how to properly handle these exotic snakes, and so they're less likely to get bit. And the other spot is some numbskull who bought a snake off the internet and thought it'd be cool to have a cobra as a pet and so has one at home and has no clue how to handle these snakes properly. So if this guy, he gets bit because he's being careless, then he shows up in your emergency room. What are you going to do? Well, most hospitals are unlikely to carry cobra anti-venin. So what do you do? Well, you could call the Poison Control Center and see if they can locate some for you. And that number again, which is worth committing to memory, is 1-800-222-1222. Or the other person you might be willing, able to call is the American Zoo and Aquarium Association. And their number is 301-562-0777. They're located out of Maryland but they know about all the zoos in the country, and they might be able to find a zoo that happens to have cobra antivenin. And if they're nice, they might send some to you. Uh, they're more likely to have this stuff right because they're the ones who are dealing with these snakes 
on a daily basis, and so they want to have that stuff around. And that's it for snake envenomations. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments, uh, and I'll talk to you later.